Hey, what's going on guys? This is chapter 17 of the CSCS test prep. We're going to start with this intro slide here. And before we dive into these seven key steps, which is the most important part of this chapter, we're going to discuss some basic concepts here. A um, couple things, right? So specificity, you want to make sure that you are working with the right muscles and movement patterns that are important to the athlete or your client, right? And then we also have the SAD principle, specific adaptation to impose demands. Um, the amount of input and specific type of input is gonna result in a certain output after our training session. So we wanna be aware of that going into training, right? Overload, um, you want to increase the intensity as you continue your regimen and also progression, right? So intensity and technique matters in how you progress a certain exercise or how you progress a certain training regimen. So seven key steps. Needs analysis is the first one. You wanna be sure to look out for what needs are trying to be met with this athlete with this training um, program um, exercise selection based on the needs we're going to select certain exercises um, training frequency is also something that we want to be sure of going forward exercise order um, training load and repetitions volume and rest periods we're going to go over all of these seven things starting now all right so here's step one needs analysis we want to make sure we know what we're working with here, right? So whether that's a certain sport, a certain movement that's involved in that sport, or the athlete's physiology and injury, sorry, um, to make sure that we fully understand what task we've been given, right? Um, again, assessment of the athlete, we need to be aware of their needs and their goals that's the most important thing and then when it comes to training status have they been training at um, a certain intensity uh, how long have they been training how much experience do they have in this kind of training and then what kind of training have they been participating in um, have they been um, lifting heavy weights have they been running distance right so that also matters um, and you can use physical testing and evaluation when it comes to analyzing the needs, right? Um, for example, a manual muscle test is a great way to kind of do a quick screen of, hey, this person is weak in this muscle or in this um, movement, right? So going on to step two, which is exercise selection, now it becomes a little more specific to that person, right? Do we want to focus on core exercises or assistance exercises? Um, general answer is you want to start with core exercises that recruit more than one uh, muscle area. So uh, if you're thinking chest, um, doing something like uh, bench press, right? Um, which involves two or more primary joints. So you're working the shoulder, you're working the elbow or through the shoulder and through the elbow, and that's targeting two joints right there at the very least. Versus you have the assistance exercise, right? So you're working a smaller muscle group here. So doing something like a biceps curl, for example, you're working the upper arm mainly, um, as opposed to doing a core exercise where you're working big joints in your body like the shoulders or the hip. And then we have structural exercises and power exercises as another way to distinguish exercises. So you have structural and that's loading the spine directly. Um, a back squat is a good example of that where you're basically working against gravity on the way back up while your spine is fully loaded with some weights or you can do it indirectly with uh, an exercise like a power clean where you're using the momentum to quickly bring that barbell up um, and then we also have the power exercise right so power exercises are generally exercises that create um, strength or force in a very short amount of time 
right? So things like plyometric exercises, such as hopping and jumping is a good example of that. So just different ways to think about and consider your training program with different categories of exercises. And then, of course, the movement analysis is important, like we talked about earlier. Um, we want to be aware of the SAD principle. I would make sure you know what this is before your exam. And then exercises that promote recovery and balance is always good. All right, now we're on step three, training frequency. Um, in the beginning, they recommend three workouts a week. So three days of workouts um, in a week, right? And then you want to schedule at least one recovery day, um, but no more than three recovery days between the same muscle groups, right? Um, a split routine is an example that they gave here when you're trying to come up with a good training frequency. Um, this is a very basic split routine, but it works um, pretty well for most people. So doing, uh, this is an example of doing something like um, lower body exercises on Monday and Thursday, and then upper body exercises on Tuesday and Friday. You get enough break in between um, the same muscle groups, right? Because you want at least one recovery there, but no more than three days. So that's just a way to think about training frequency. And then moving on to step four, which is exercise order. Um, this is a general rule of thumb that works great and something that you should also be aware of for the exam. Um, you want to start with power exercises. We talked about power exercises earlier. It's mostly plyometric exercises where you're quickly producing um, the greatest amount of force in the shortest amount of time. Um, and it's mostly most affected by fatigue out of all these different exercises here. So you want to start with power and then we move on to core exercise, which is also something that we talked about earlier where you're, <coughs> excuse me, um, where you're working with two or more joints in your body. And then finally move on to assistance exercises where you isolate one specific muscle group and work that muscle. So um, good way to memorize uh, this order. And then circuit training um, is another kind of exercise that you can do. And you can also incorporate this into your training regimen. Um, and with circuit training, you're looking at minimal rest, which is 20 to 30 seconds in between the exercises to focus on cardio. And then you have the superset, um, two sequentially performed exercises that stress two opposing muscle groups, right? So a good example of this here is doing barba biceps, right? And then the opposing muscle group, which is the triceps, you do that next with a triceps pushdown exercise. So that's the definition of a superset. And then you have the compound set, which is two different exercises for the same muscle group. So doing something like um, barbell biceps curl, although we don't typically use barbells for biceps curl, uh, that's just an example. And then using a biceps curl machine to work the same muscle group, that would be a compound set, right? You're compounding um, the exercises onto the same muscle group. And then we have step five out of seven, and that's training load and repetitions. So um, a couple important definitions to understand here, right? So very important here, um, load is the amount of weight assigned to exercise set, right? So if I'm doing three sets of 10 of um, a bench press, that's 100 pounds basically, right? That would be, 100 pounds would be the load, correct? And then the work is weight times number of times it's lifted. So now you're looking at 100 pounds, which is the load, right? Because that's the weight, times number of times it's lifted. Three times 10 is you're doing 30 reps of it. So your work would be 3,000, right? 
and then repetition volume is total number of repetitions essentially so um, that would be 30 okay relationship between load and reps load commonly described as certain percent so load this is saying the load is commonly described as certain percentage of your one rep max so for example if an athlete can perform 10 reps with 60 kilogram kilograms sorry 10 rep max their 10 rep max is going to be 60 kilo kilograms because they can do 10 reps with 60 kilograms right and the most accurate relationship between percentage of one rep max and max reps possible is for those greater than 75 percent of your one rep max but fewer than 10 reps does this make sense um, so what this is saying is if you're trying to figure out the relationship between the percentage of one rep max and how many reps it's possible to lift that weight um, that one rep max equation works best for loads that are greater than 75 percent of the one rep max but you want to keep that below 10 reps to be accurate so just a couple numbers to be sure to know about here and then we have the one rep max and multiple rep max testing we talked about this in the previous chapter um, so you can go ahead and look back on that one if you need to all right so step five is training load and repetitions um, this is continued from the last slide here assigning percentages of power training so this is what we talked about previously greater than uh, greater the amount of concentric force slower the muscle shortening right um, so an easy way to think about this is if you're having to lift heavier weight um, using uh, a dumbbell by doing a biceps curl you're gonna struggle a little more versus lifting a light weight it's gonna be faster right um, peak power is defined as something that's generally achieved with lifting very light loads okay or sorry let me rephrase that um, peak power is most accurate when you're you're lifting very light loads so this is 0 to 30 percent of your one rep max right and we talked about this in the previous slide most ideal one rep max percentage for power training however you want to be at 75 to 90 percent of one rep max for most optimal power training right that's where you build up the most amount of power and that's where you want to be if you're training for something that requires a lot of power even um, more in detail if we're looking at here um, single effort power events like high jumps where it just requires one um, power based movement or a shot put you want to train at 80 to 90 percent of your one run max and go for one or two repetitions right that's where the sweet spot is versus a multiple effort power event like football or basketball where you're having to continuously um, make the effort to produce that amount of strength in a short amount of time like in football you have to tackle someone basketball you have to go for a dunk um, you want to train at 75 to 85 percent of your one rep max um, but at a higher rep so you're going for three to five reps at that range okay timing load increases um, so two for two rule is something you want to know for the test as well this just means if the athlete can perform two or more reps over assigned rep goals in the last set in two consecutive consecutive workouts it's time to increase the weight that's too low for them let's see what that means i know that's a lot of words so let's just say that i assign an athlete to perform a bench press for three sets of 10 okay at 100 pounds just to keep it consistent consistent sorry 
So this is saying that if on day one they were able to do three sets of 10 at 100 pounds and day two comes around and so this is day two of our workouts so it won't necessarily be Monday and Tuesday it'll be the next time they work out um, and they were able to do three sets of 12 right so that's two more reps over assigned rep goals in the last two consecutive workouts and then day three they're able to do three sets of 14 let's just say for uh, the sake of the argument it's time to increase the weight from 100 pounds so something a little heavier all right step six volume volume is defined as the total amount of weight lifted in training session and volume load is the total number of sets times the number of reps times weight lifted per rep all right rest periods core exercises like the bench press um, you want to try to get up to four rep max load um, that means how many you're basically maxed out at four reps right and then you want to have four minute rest periods in between um, those sets and then assistance exercises you're maxed out at 12 so if you're doing something like three sets of 12 four sets of 12 um, that's a sweet spot and you only require one minute of rest period so that is it for today um, i hope you guys found that helpful if you have any questions please um, comment in the comment section down below and I'll see you next time.